So everybody's been saying, oh, Jingles, you've got to have a go with the M3 Lee in War Thunder. It's amazing. Yeah, right. Pull the other one. It's got bells on. You must think I was born yesterday. <laughs> I'm not driving that piece of crap. I had enough of that in World of Tanks. And yet so many people were saying, no, seriously, have a go with the Lee. It's unbelievable. I thought, well, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try. But I'm not dumb enough to just jump in unprepared, so I thought, oh, OK, I'll check it out first. And using the built-in War Thunder Armour viewer, hmm, huh, this isn't bad, you know. I mean, it's, it's no Tiger, but considering the battle rating this thing has, that's, that's not bad armour. Certainly from the front. Taking into account the thickness and the slope of the armour, the, the frontal armour of the M3 is approaching 60mm pretty much everywhere. And the little turret on the top is approaching 90 millimeters. That's not bad at all. Particularly since, well, that was the death knell for this thing in World of Tanks. That completely useless wedding cake turret on the top was where you always get shot first in this thing, because it's the first thing anybody saw as you're coming over a hill. And it was completely useless because the gun on it doesn't work. But the gun on it does work here in War Thunder, and that 37 millimeter gun isn't bad at all. Of course, the sidearm is terrible, and if you get shot on the side, you're going to get penetrated. But another thing that surprised me, taking into account that this thing does have six crew, is that there's an awful lot of empty space inside the M3 lean, which means that shots that do penetrate, particularly from the side, have a very good chance of not actually hitting anything, <laughs> passing harmlessly out the other side. So, okay, I can, I can sort of see, just from looking at the thing in the garage, what all the fuss might be about. So let's give it a go. Let's see how this thing actually performs under combat conditions. So, arcade battle. It's the Poland map, and I think this is the very first game I ever played in the M3. I'm not entirely certain. I think I have bound my different guns to various different mouse buttons. I can't remember if I did or not in my first game. I guess we'll soon find out. And it's definitely, absolutely something you should do. It even set the machine gun, the tiny little extra turret on top of the wedding cake, set that to a separate button, because with the introduction of working machine guns, you finally have something that you can use to defend yourself against aircraft. You know, instead of sending a 75mm high explosive shell in the general direction of the Sturmovik and hoping you get lucky. Which is hilarious when it works, but doesn't always work. So, the M3 and Lee. There's a lot been said about this machine. It was not a particularly good tank, but it was good enough. And even as this thing was being designed, America knew that it wasn't a very good tank, but they needed something that was good enough now, uh, rather than something like the M4 that was going to be better six months to a year down the line. America had a lot of catching up to do at the start of World War II. The US Army in particular was shockingly undermanned, undergeared and underfunded. Which seems amazing when you look at what the US Army became over the course of the Second World War. Tanks in particular, they had far too many designs and none of them were any good. And the M3 Lean was the first step towards standardising and industrialising tank production. They weren't stupid, they knew the M3 wasn't particularly good, but it was good enough. And they needed a tank that was good enough now, thank you very much, rather than a tank that was going to be even better, six months to a year down the line. And it certainly was good enough in this battle. I came around the corner, into the cap circle, and suddenly all these enemy tanks pop up in front of me, and I just thought, oh, that's it, I'm screwed. Oh, I've done it again. Right into the teeth of the enemy attack. And yet, strangely, they couldn't seem to kill me. <laughs> Not from the front, anyway. There's at least... I mean, these are just the ones we can see. There's a minimum of three or four enemy tanks and tank destroyers right there in front of me. And they just... They just can't kill me. There's an enemy Lee up there as well. And I thought he was going to give me some particular problems. But... Um, it turns out that a Lee has just as many problems killing another... Oh, here he comes. <laughs> Trying to get this thing turned so I can plant a 75mm AP round into the side. And, yep, yeah, there it is. And it fragments as it goes inside. It does all kinds of damage to him. And he's gone. We got him. We took him out. 
This tank is incredible from the front. When it's top tier, of course. Um, it's not going to fare quite so well against T-34, 57s and Tigers. <laughs> but <laughs> and there's... Oh, that's a Stuart. Oh, hit him. And there's another enemy lead. And the two of us just... We were just wasting ammunition on each other from the front. And I'm giving everything here. 75mm, 37mm machine guns. Nothing is doing anything to this guy. I've hit him multiple times. He's hit me multiple times. Neither of us can kill each other. This was a really, really fun game. A really intense battle. Slugging it out with multiple enemy tanks in the cap circle. You know, where you should be. Might not have been quite as much fun if I'd come around the corner and been amaracked by the first thing I saw, but man, that didn't happen, because I'm in an M3. But then the Great Equaliser appears, the T-50, and unfortunately I'm only firing 37 and 75mm armor piercing, so I can't kill him. We don't have any Yag Tigers, and we don't have any Tiger 2s on our team, so nobody's going to be able to take him out. And the T-50, of course, can kill anything from any range, because Russian. And yes, I do realise that sitting as I was in the middle of the cap circle, shrugging off massive amounts of enemy fire and then complaining about a T-50 turning up is more than a little hypocritical, but it is just typical that if you're going to be taken out by anything, it's going to be one of those things. Of course, you know, that could have just been a fluke. I mean, I took a lot of hits in that game before eventually getting taken out, but it's not going to be like that every time you play an M3, surely? Well, you be the judge. This is the King of Gods. And he is also driving his M3 Lee in an arcade battle. And almost the first shot that hits him sets his engine on fire. And have a look at the damage messages scrolling up there in the bottom left corner of the screen. Practically every single equipment module and crew member has either been knocked out or damaged by that engine fire before his fire extinguisher finally put the flames out. So right at the start of the game, his tank's been crippled and he can't stop to repair because he's in the open and he's under fire. And that right in front of him is an enemy M3 Lee. This is going to take some time. <laughs> you won't believe how long this is going to take. So um, let's have some music while we wait. He's given it everything he's got. Coaxial machine gun. 303 mount in the mini turret in the top, 37 mil, 75. Doesn't seem to be doing anything, does it? <laughs> of course, the enemy M3 is only exposing his uh, his little wedding cake arrangement on top of the tank, and that's where his strongest frontal armor is. I mean, it's approaching 90 millimeters of effective thickness due to the sloping. So the chances of him actually being able to do any kind of damage here were pretty slim. And it doesn't take that long before he realises and thinks, screw it, I'm going to have to close in the range and actually take shots at something I can penetrate. Remember, his tank is crippled. He has not been able to repair it. Every single module he has is damaged. Most of his crew are wounded. Don't know what sort of condition the enemy M3 is in, but we haven't seen him take any damage yet. It looks like that. What is going on with that tree? <laughs> Do you see that? <laughs> it's like the trees just thought, screw this, I'm out of here. I've had enough of this. Yeah, 37 mil and 303s against the tur mini turrets are just, just not going to happen. You're going to have to get in. Oh, and here it comes. Close combat. Two M3 minis. I seem to be saying this a lot in my videos lately, but this really, really is like watching two old people having sex. Don't ask me how I know what that looks like. <laughs> the answer would just disturb you. <laughs> oh, oh, Jiggles, we've said too much. Look at this. Well, he's finally hurting this guy. But... <laughs> Well, one of you, please kill the other one. I mean, this is just getting embarrassing. Oh, another tree's decided it's had enough. <laughs> I, I think it's fairly safe to say both tanks are very heavily damaged at this point, and aircraft is strafing them, and that's probably not helping much. Will somebody please die? I mean, <laughs> look at this. 
This has been going on for approaching three minutes now, and still neither of them are dead. And it, they're not alone, of course. Somebody keeps putting shots into the front right quarter of King of Gods M3. You can see the shots there hitting the suspension and the 75mm gun sponson. So somebody else is doing their level best to kill him as well, and it's just not happening. Has anybody been keeping track of the number of shots these guys are putting into each other? Even just the 37 mil Oh, 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 where are you going? No, no, don't drive around in front of him. He's got his 75mm gun on that side, and you don't. And, oh, this is not good. This is not good at all. 37 mil up. Fire. Hopefully he took that 75 mil out. And the enemy appears to be on fire. Well, that's even the score slightly. <laughs> Stops and takes the time to plant one through the observation port there, and you'll note that uh, we have finally fixed in patch 1.45 the most annoying problem with War Thunder Ground Forces replays in that the actual crosshairs on the sniper mode were never pointed at wherever you were actually aiming. But with the M3 lead dead, now he can finally turn his attention to this annoying little bugger who must have put 30 or 40 shots into him from over there. None of which did anything other than blow his tracks off. And yes, this guy is actually going to try to ram the tank three times his size and three times his weight. And it didn't work out too well for him. Of course, King of God's tank is a complete write-off at this point. He hasn't had an opportunity to stop and repair all the damage he took from practically the first shot he took in the entire game when his engine was set on fire. That fire, of course, spread to every single module and crewman that he had. His tank is completely wrecked. And it would appear... But for the first time since this game started, there's nobody around him but friendly tanks. So he's going to start getting this thing repaired. God knows how long it's going to take. So we're going to skip ahead to when he finally gets this thing moving again. He spent almost a full minute repairing this thing, and then immediately wrecked it again. <laughs> the second he got it moving, he's managed to move about 30 metres, and what feels like the entire enemy team have been bombing him, calling in artillery on him, and shooting at him. He had a PBY drop a pair of thousand pound bombs on him earlier. Luckily they missed by a country mile. Um, he's been artilleried, he's had the toolbox there on the left side of the tank at the rear has been blown right off, his tracks are hanging on by a thread. He's completely immobilized. Once again, massive module damage, uh, multiple injured crewmen, but most importantly he's not dead and he can continue fighting. Of course, when you're sitting immobilised like this, it doesn't take long for the sharks to sniff the blood in the water and start circling around looking for a kill. And here they come. It's an enemy M2, I believe, or possibly an M3. And he's, ah, uh, I've got you now, fat man. And he's sneaking around behind him. He's going to lift his shirt up and handle him roughly and violently from behind. But our friend in the lee has not been idle. He has been repairing his tracks. And, ah, uh, that's right, sunshine. You're not feeling quite so clever now, are you? <laughs> Yeah, that's right, you little punk. It's no good screaming for your mommy now. We're in Europe. Your mommy's in Ohio, 4,000 miles away. She can't hear you. <laughs> Look at this. War Thunder Arcade tank physics at its finest. You ain't seen nothing yet. Hang on. Any second now. Come on. Wait until you see this. Oh, I don't know who called in the artillery there. Probably the light tank. He didn't have anything else to lose at that point. Oh, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, and they're being strafed, but that's not it, wait for it, come on, we haven't got all day, look at it, his, his turret's jammed and his tracks are blown off, he can't do anything, <laughs> all he can actually hit him with is, oh and he's set him on fire, there it is, <laughs> oh War Thunder, you so silly, <laughs> But that was epic. He had nothing. Not The only thing that worked was the little, the tiny little commander's machine gun turret on the top. And he set him on fire with the 303 machine gun. Absolutely fantastic. So, anyway, the M3 Lee in War Thunder. Um, is this thing a little overpowered? I think it might be. But it's nice to have found a tank game in which the M3 Lee isn't a massive steaming pile of crap. And uh, War Thunder would appear to be it. Unless, of course, the enemy team have any T-50s, in which case, all bets are off. So, thank you to the King of Gods 
for sending this replay in, which uh, provided me with no end of entertainment and amusement. And uh, hopefully you lot enjoyed too. The M3 Lee in War Thunder. It's really rather good. Take care, folks, and I'll catch you next time.